Hi, my name is Jeff Fassbinder with Align, and today we're going to look at the T Rex 550L Dominator, the completed model as you see it now, and we're going to go through the process of connecting the G Pro uh, with the servos. And also, uh, I will get a little tighter on the wiring because some people have asked me about how my wires, they're still loose up top here, but I just want to show how I did manage to get them inside of the frame and uh, get a little closer for you uh, on that respect. And we'll go through the basic setup for the G-Pro as far as the helicopter, the linkage, uh, setting that as zero, our positive uh, pitch, and utilizing the software as uh, supplied by line. Uh, I'll be using the uh, computer for this uh, demonstration in order so that you can better see the screen and what's going on with the software and your radio. Um, in this case, I'll be utilizing the Futaba system, um, and it's the 14SG, but uh, you can do the same with uh, Spectrum as well as GR Radio Systems. Make sure you check out uh, my, my videos on uh, YouTube. Just, just search uh, Align or Jeff Fastbinder, and you'll be able to find those videos with regard to uh, specifically setting up with G Pro and those type of radio systems. Uh, but for now, let's look at uh, the, the wiring because again a lot of people were asking me about the wiring and uh, I just want to just get it tight for you on the frame just so you can get a, a good look and then we'll get started with the setup process uh, after the build. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the build uh, section of the video. It was very easy to put together. Uh, this the, the 550L Dominator is very reminiscent of the 700E uh, layout so if you've built a 700 before it probably came very natural for you if you haven't uh, with the instructions as we went through page by page during the build um, I went as sequence as provided in your manual so you could follow along and build with that video uh, with your manual and you know build your helicopter so hope you enjoyed that but let's get started on setting up the G Pro with our new T-Rex 550L The elevator servo you see here, as well as your rudder servo, there are design slots in the frame to actually prevent chafing of your wiring and also gives you the ability to root your wiring. You'll notice that on the, the rudder servo here, uh, there's a selection of holes on the frame for you to mount your wiring and what I've done here is utilize those holes to route my wiring up into the front here of the radio tray area. There is an extension included on the rudder. Uh, you'll notice that I have some uh, it basically double stick tape on that uh, piece. Uh, you can use that or you can actually use uh, dental floss. Uh, some people use the waxed, wax type cord to tie that together and there are also clips available from various uh, companies in order to ensure that that uh, cable doesn't come undone with the actual servo uh, wire so just letting you know there and then we're going to come back down we're going to pull back and we're going to go from our cyclic servos you got the elevator you got your uh, pitch and aileron servos kind of hard to see both of them but they're right there and again you note the wiring it's coming down through that hole in the back here from the elevator meeting up with the servo in front here pulling down and then it's coming underneath the lower bearing block or I should say the motor block here the wires are going underneath that but you're pulling the wires away so they can't interfere with the gearing nor the pinion and also since we're right here I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get a little tighter for you What you want here on this gear, the pinion and the main gear, you want to make sure that 
the base of the pinion and the base of the main gear are level or, or parallel, if you will. So when you're looking at it from the side and you turn your helicopter on its side, you'll notice that both should be on the same plane, basically lining up flush with the bottom of the pinion. And this will ensure smooth operation of your gear mesh. So let's, again, we'll move from, from there. Okay, we're picking up our wiring again, coming from our cyclic servos. Pull back out here. So our wiring from our cyclic servos on this side of the frame is moving underneath the motor, the motor block, and we're pulling it tight against the frame. And then we're leading it right into the front radio tray area here, up to the G-Pro. And that's pretty much it. You know, some people were asking, you know, some people were riding on the outside. You can do it on the outside if you choose. I just mounted it on the inside. It is possible. And actually, again, there are holes incorporated into the design layout in order to, for you to achieve this. Front radio tray is pretty simple, straightforward. I have the S bus uh, wire connected to my receiver. And that wire leads up to the G Pro here. And right now, I actually happen to have the uh, Bluetooth device hooked up as well as the USB because we're going to take a look at the software and set this up because we finished the build in our last video. Now it's time just to get the setup going so we can actually fly our helicopter. So let me pull back here. And I'm going to see if I can get my software screen right here for you so that way you can see both at the same time the helicopter and what the software is doing and uh, and then I'll uh, note what uh, my radio is doing and try and show that at the same time so let me uh, get that in frame for you okay got a little tighter got the computer screen in focus for you as well as the helicopter what we want to have available to us right now is our radio need that powered on in this case, I'm using the uh, 14SG. And we're going to need a device to power our system here. And basically, I've used a, I have a LiPo with a regulator. The reason why I do this is so that way I don't need to disconnect the power poles from the motor to the ESC. And it just simplifies when working inside the house. Uh, so I don't have to worry about any uh, hot starts or anything like that with, uh, with the ESC. So, if uh, you want to use your ESC for power, you can, because it does have a BSE included, BEC. Uh, but you'll need to disconnect the power poles from the actual ESC in order to ensure that you can have safe operation while setting up your helicopter. In this case, I've just pulled the throttle channel. I've pulled it out. And that way, I can put my power directly into that port and power the unit. So right now I've already I powered up the G Pro software. You'll notice it says connected here. And like I said, I did have my Bluetooth device. Even though I'm not using the Bluetooth device, I'm gonna go ahead and show you something real quick on the software here. There's a thing called set Bluetooth password. You wanna click that as recommended in the manual and set up a password. The reason being you wanna be at the airfield uh, there may be other users utilizing the G Pro, and they may have uh, firmware on their phone, at, you know, and you don't want yours set up at the default, which is zero zero zero. So basically four zeros. So just use a four-digit number. I'm just going to put in one two three four here. One two three four, and then I'm just going to tell it set. All right, that that's basically it for the Bluetooth and setting the code for it. So you can do that, you can put that aside, and what I'll do is I'll actually just take that off now. But I programmed uh, this with a password, and we're good for safe operation at our local field with our password applied. All right, so we have a connection here on screen. Uh, it says setup menu and parameter menu. We're gonna wanna go into the setup menu. Select setup. And in this case, we're going to say create new settings. And it's asking us if we want to do that. And we say yes. Go ahead. All right. And 
as covered in a previous video actually of the setup of the G Pro that I've done, um, it goes through the actual process for different types, whether it be Futaba, Conventional, Spectrum, or JR. There's, there's different types that you'll need to select and this is having to do with the binding process. Uh, in Futaba's case, uh, there's really not a link process, uh, but you will need to select SBUS if that's what you're using. So I've selected SBUS and inside your radio you want to check basically all the directions. In this case right now you'll notice that the ailerons moving back and forth left and right. In your radio what you need to do is go to your endpoint adjustments and you're going to need to make some changes. In this case you'll notice that I have 105-105 uh, and I have that on my elevator, I have that on my rudder, and the reason for that is to calibrate the endpoints. Again, this was uh, covered in a previous video, but I'm going to go ahead and just zoom in so you can see that a little more closely, and that way you can see how that correlates to what the radio is doing. Okay, so when I give a left input on aileron, you want it to be 100%. If I moved my setting in my radio, and let's say I just put it at 100, and that's what I'm going to do right now. You see on your screen there? Let me get in even tighter there. I want to make sure you can see that. But you notice how now that I've moved my uh, radio travel, my travel adjustment to 100%, it's showing uh, like 83% here. What I'm going to do though is put it back to the 105 setting and you'll notice that number start to creep back up while I'm holding a left input on my aileron. Okay, now I'm back to 105, and if you go over, I'm going to just go over a lot, you'll see how, you see how it shows that flashing light there, uh, that's telling you that, you know, you have, have too much. So I'm going to pull that back to 105, and in general with the Futaba radio um, systems, most of the gimbals are around 104, 105, so just letting you know that. As far as the direction this is where you would make adjustments. If, for instance, if I gave a left input on aileron, you'd want to go into your reverse menu in your radio, and you'll go in there, and you'll need to make adjustments there. And you'll note that elevator, throttle, and pitch have been reversed. Okay, this has nothing to do with what's going on with the helicopter. What it does have to do with is what's going on on screen here with the G Pro. I know that may sound a little confusing, but what you want to have happen is when you give a left input, you want it to go to the left on screen. When the software is calibrated with your radio, you'll be ensured that you'll have your helicopter working in the correct manner. So I give an up input for elevator, goes up, down. I give pitch, positive, negative, so you want to make sure, again, the same calibration technique we used in the uh, ATV menu, you'll do the same for each of your channels here. Uh, rudder, left, right, left, right. Not looking at the helicopter, we're only looking at the stick movement of your radio and what's happening on screen here. So that's what we want to check out right now. We want to make sure that's working. Again, this is covered extensively in uh, the video for the G Pro setup. So if you have any questions or concerns, make sure you check out that video. It goes through the G Pro uh, very uh, carefully for you. So we'll do that. We'll do throttle as well. Get your throttle set up. What you want to have when you're setting up your throttle, even if you're running governor mode with the Talon 90, you want to make sure you have a linear line, basically 0, 50, 100, just a straight straight line uh, basically you know it's going off at a 45 on the graph there 
and you want to do that for your initial throttle setup uh, as far as for calibrating and also calibrating the talon itself. When you do do your calibration process, uh, you know, make sure you check Castle's site. They do have setup uh, videos as well, but you will not need to calibrate it. And basically what you do is you go in your radio when you are calibrating and you go to your radio and right there on your throttle, what you're going to do is you'll start out at 50-50. What I mean is this number here will be 50 and this number will be here 50. And what you'll do is you'll advance, you'll put your throttle basically full power on your ESC, you'll, you'll put it at, at full power when you power up the ESC. And this needs to be at 50-50 at that time. And when you do that, you'll keep moving this number up until you hear a beep. And then you'll pull it back down to the idle position. And then you'll move your other number until you hear it beep again. And then you'll know it's calibrated. So that way your radio and uh, ESC, or should I say your Talon 90, are in sync with each other. So make sure you check out Castle site. They got some great information there for you on that. And a number of updates and things of that nature for firmware. So as far as the G Pro right now, we've checked everything out. And everything is working as it should. Throttle, full power, idle. We also have our gear, which is our uh, tail. Pull that in there. And you'll notice it's about 70%. Okay, your instructions uh, that come with your kit will tell you to be about 70%. Uh, in my normal mode, right now I'm at uh, 74, but as I go to my idle up, I'm pulling back to about 68 there. Uh, it depends on your head speed and what you're doing. So set that to your taste, but ballpark to start off with is about 70% uh, for you yourself there. So once you have that and that's working uh, as it should there, we're going to move to the next step. Click next. Now we're going to set the gyro mounting position. In this case, we have the gyro facing forward, the G Pro. You'll see the uh, the arrow on the front of the G Pro. Pull back here. And on the G Pro itself, you want that facing forward, the front of the helicopter. And that's going to correspond to your selection here. You'll notice you have four selections. In this case, we're going to select this option here because that's facing forward with G Pro. Your wire is facing towards the rear or your connections for your wiring. The next thing you want to check out is the blade direction. In this case, the rotation is clockwise. Okay, so if you're operating in a line helicopter most likely it's clockwise in its orientation pull back out there's information here as far as what's going on uh, you can read through that at your leisure uh, but for now I just want to show you what the operation was we're doing to calibrate our radio and G Pro okay now as far as swash type and collective pitch you can get tight here Okay, positive, we want the leading edge of the blade. You'll see the arrow, it's turning in a clockwise fashion. Leading edge going up, positive pitch. That's what we want. Uh, again, majority of all line helicopters work in this fashion. Uh, when we look at uh, swash type, we're gonna select HR3. And here's a keynote here. Uh, when you look at the front of the helicopter again the same thing with your G Pro as I pointed out that uh, yellow sticker that's on the front there you're gonna know channel 2, channel 3, channel 1 just think of them that way think of those as servo locations so here channel 1 channel 2, channel 3 some people will say oh it's elevator, it's aileron and it's pitch that's that is true but when you're setting up your G Pro rather than getting concerned about channels and so forth if you look at your helicopter 
just like we did in the software. Let me see if we can see both there. I'm gonna just I'm gonna stay on the heli here. When we look at the swash, this this servo here is set at channel one, okay, on the G Pro. And when you look at the face of the G Pro, it shows channel one. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you take that wiring, goes down, and you plug that in channel one. Again, you're looking at the diagram on your computer. This is channel two, this side right here of the swash plate. Because again, we're looking at the helicopter this way, the front. This is channel two. Doesn't matter aileron or, or pitch for that matter. What we're concerned with right now is making sure that this is channel two and it's synced up to our G Pro in the front here. So this wire is connected to channel two. Same thing goes on the other side here. This will be channel three. This one goes down the wiring, plugs into channel three. It's that simple. You don't need to, you know, think about channel assignments and things like that. That's why in the previous venue, when we were looking at the orientation of the servo and the travels, we wanted to make sure that it's working there. Not on the helicopter, it's working in the software itself. When the software is working and functioning correctly, your helicopter is going to work correctly. Don't worry about looking at just your helicopter via your receiver. That's, that's not how this works. You know, you need to make it sure it works with the software. So we're going to pull back out. Again, I'm going to go over here to the software. And again, we're looking at H3. Again, the elevator's on one. You know, you have your, your other cyclic servo on the left channel. You got channel two. And on the right side of the helicopter, you have channel three. Just think of it that way in this diagram and you'll, you'll be a breeze. As far as the orientation here though, okay, channels one, two, and three, this is where you set up the reverse. So I'm gonna operate my, my stick on my radio and that's not what we want. So what I'm gonna do in the software is I'll select reverse channel one And that's not it. And I'm going to reverse channel two. And right now, what I have for my setup is channel one and two normal and channel three reversed. So when I operate my radio, let me go here. When I give a positive input, all the servos are working in unison here. Again, your reverse channel was to set the orientation of the radio in that first screen when we're looking at the G Pro software. It's not to set up what's going on here. That is done through the software specifically. So any reversing that needs to happen needs to happen in the software itself, not inside of your radio. Your radio, when we do that, it's just for setting up orientation. So your stick movements uh, correspond to what the G Pro is looking at. So again, positive, negative, all servos are moving together. That's great. They're all moving together, but we got to go one more step here. All right, now we have what's called sub trim. And in order to do the sub trim, we're going to need a tool, a very important tool, swash leveling tool and so what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna pop the rotor head off and when I pop the rotor head off what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna to go to the software and I'll use in the menu here in the setup menu I'm gonna use sub trim and the sub trim not in my radio again just in the software I'll use this right here to make sure that my swash is level. Once I've done that, the rest is pretty much a breeze. So let me, uh, I'm gonna stay tight on there. I'm gonna try and keep that helicopter right where it is. And uh, you'll notice that I'm gonna pop these, pop the links off and so forth, so I can put the swash leveler on. So let me do this. Just take your time. 
You pull this around. Using my ball ink pliers. All right, and now what I'm going to do. is I'm going to we're going to remove this uh, screw here X. and this will allow me to uh, take off the rotor system and we're going to put the uh, swash leveler on here. And I need my shim for this main shaft, so we'll put this shim on here. And then we're going to look and make sure that this is level. So let's get that level to come around. And we'll look at the software. And so I'm going to make the adjustments as needed here so looks like we're the back's low, the elevator servo position one and position three looks a little low so I'm gonna bring that up I'm trying to keep it in one position so that way you can see. So let me, that's other touching. And you also notice these new 815 servos, these digital servos from Align, high voltage servos, there's absolutely no sound. They're dead quiet. Again, these are super efficient and they're working fabulous for a number of our competition pilots as well as our demo team pilots. So, you know, there's they're just working really well. But you can hear, even when I, I put a load on them or anything, they're, they're not making any sound. So our swash right now is level. I did have to put some numbers in on the screen. I'll go ahead and show you. So here's some of the numbers that I had to use. It may differ for you. So on servo one, I put in uh, 31. And then on servo 3, I put in uh, 30. Servo 2, no movement there. Okay, so the swash is level, which is a great thing. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to need to put in our, our zero pitch. So I'll need to remount the rotor head and uh, make sure that that's working at zero degrees. So I'll take off that and I'm going to reapply the rotor head. Also note uh, at this time, as you may be asking from the build, about my servo horns. My servo horns are actually still loose. So I'm going to check that out right now and see where I'm at. And they all appear to be close to 90, but once we zero, we'll see if we're actually dead on or not. But uh, rest assured, your swash is level and that is the key to most any fiber wireless system to ensure uh, safe reliable operation so that's what we want so we have that let's go ahead and pop the head back on here And at this time, what we'll need is a digital pitch gauge. So I'm going to use they're a little tough. Turn the, your uh, ball ink sideways 
And then you can always twist it. Just give it a little twist. Get it to pop on. That and then again make sure you twist this. Use my uh, needle nose here. Get that set up. All right, so all right, so now we have that. We know our swash is level, which is critical. Again, my horns on here. I left the screw just loose. I hadn't tightened it, just like from the build, as you saw when I finished up. So they were just mounted on there, and the screw was inserted. But we're gonna need to make sure we lock tight that. Once everything's set up, I usually take care of that. So I just wanted to let you know about that. I didn't to omit that step. All right. So right now we're gonna need this. We're gonna need our digital pitch gauge. Power this up. And we're gonna need to zero it wherever we're working on our helicopter. We're gonna zero this out. And then we're gonna attach it to one of our blades. And let's see. Let's get our stick at center stick our radio and then let's check our collective trim here okay going the wrong way here And what we want to do is, of course, we're setting the collective trim. In. Okay, we want it to be zero. Obviously, we're not. Again, this is why I told you that I had kept the horns basically loose. Okay, so I've shown you we checked the head. We're only able to achieve uh, three three point eight there, and that's not going to work. So what we're going to need to do is I'm going to we're going to walk three zero it but what I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew I'm going to unscrew the servo horns. My radio is at mid stick. And the software, we have that all zeroed out now. Actually, I'll need to take out that sub trim we had put in and make it zero. Okay, so mid stick on the radio, I've zeroed it out on the actual software. Now I'm gonna look at my horns and say, okay, well, I've got my swash level, but unfortunately, my horns aren't 90. They're, they're off, they're actually tilted up. Again, like I said, I didn't tighten them down on purpose. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust these. And let's go ahead and go from the back side here. We'll pop that off. And don't worry about the uh, swash plate right now because we're just doing this for the first time. So we want to make sure we get the uh, spline as close to center as possible. Okay. I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna 
sure I can get as close to the 90 here as possible. Make sure that you go back and Loctite these screws for flight. Doing a setup, uh, it's okay if you yeah, just tighten them up, but for flight, you definitely want to make sure that you've Loctited them. Alright, and let me do the other side. So when you're doing your build, make sure that you don't uh, put Loctite until after you've done your radio setup. So that's that's what I've done here. I've not uh, applied Loctite to the uh, the horn screws as I knew I was going to have to. Do some adjustment. So, all right, put this back here. All right, we need to, again, back the head off. And looking at it right now, uh, it's still showing I have some positive pitch. But what I'm going to do is, uh, I think we're within range. We can do it. It's showing about three, three degrees, you know, the way it is right now. But again, we want to make sure the swash is level. So what I'm going to do is, again, I know uh, some people want to just move along and let's get to the flying field, but this part right here is pretty important. Uh, so that way, when you pirouette, your helicopter will be pretty much uh, dead flat and just pirouette right there for you. Pull the head, and we'll do the pull our swash level tool. Again, I had taken all those uh, settings out of the computer, the sub trim for the collective trim. And now we're going to take a look and. That one horn we moved on the uh, that I moved on the elevator did cause some movement. So what I need to do is go to one here in our radio, or excuse me, in our in the computer and make that adjustment and do is I'm gonna. Getting that swash level. Now I'm going to check the right side here. Make sure we're we're on. I 
and we're looking pretty good there. Um, number did change a whole lot, even after I moved the uh, horn there. So let's look at the software. So you see we picked up uh, two points on Servo 2. Servo 1's at 34 and Servo 3's at 30. Alright, so let's pull out. And what I'm going to do now that uh, we level the swash, we made some adjustment to that uh, rear horn there. I'm going to go ahead and put the rotor head back on. And we'll make sure we're able to achieve zero pitch. Again, if it's a little tight, just turn the ball sideways and then readjust that so that it's sitting on the ball pretty squared up there. Okay, so we have that on there. Let's check our pitch, get our zero. Since we moved our helicopter, I'm going to go ahead and again make sure that my pitch gauge is zeroed out. Okay, so once that's done, apply my pitch gauge. Okay, now what we're going to do is I'm going to go to the software here, All right, well, I'm at zero, but I had used a lot of collective trim here. Uh, there's a couple ways I could go about uh, knowing that out, one of which is to bottom out these uh, linkages here, or I could shorten these linkages on the helicopter themselves if I wanted to make adjustment. Right now, I'm using 25 millimeters from here to here per the manual. You can adjust them down, but I, again, in the software, I've adjusted the uh, collective trim. And just for taking a look, we'll uh, go to our next menu. We'll click next. We have cyclic trims alone. We got it zeroed out there. We're going to give positive pitch. Positive pitch. Our pitch gauge is reading 12.6. I'm going to go ahead and set mine up for 13.
All right, so I got my th 13 there. Give or take a point. Let's go right here. You can see it's at 102 on positive. And we're going to go to negative. I'm going to move the stick on the radio down to negative. And when I do that, you'll notice that it illuminated. And here, I'm going to go ahead and adjust my pitch till I get 13 as well on the bottom half here. All right, so we have 13. And now what we do is go back to the software and we're going to take a look at we're going to make sure we have our cyclic pitch. You tell it to go to 8. Basically, it tilts your swash plate. So look at the swash here. Swash has been tilted. And the pitch gauge reading eight and a half. So what I need to do is go in the software cyclic pitch and pull that down until I get to eight. We're almost done. Almost done. So okay there we go. We're we're at eight. There's the software here. And I've adjusted that, that cyclic pitch to 94. Next, I'm going to select zero pitch. We're going to check that. Now we check our device here, our pitch gauge. It's at 0.04. We could tweak that uh, to, to get zero and basically adjust that but because of my table and so forth just moving the blades here you'll see that you know 0.02 I mean that that's really close to zero so you're gonna be good there without any problems you can select release and that releases the uh, G Pro to move per your stick movements and then you can check everything out as far as your inputs so I'll put it to center stick here take a look at it again and you'll see it's it's dead it's dead on it's at zero so after you cycle and move things around uh, you'll, you'll be able to check things out so let's zoom back out take a look at the software screen here and we're gonna select next and we got standard servo type this is for our rudder uh, setup Rudder direction, normal. Let's see. Let's see if it is in fact normal. Let's see if I can manipulate the alley there. All right, I put the tail right here. And I'm gonna give a, giving a right input and it's tail blades going to the left. So what we need to do is we need to change that. So again, as far as reversing, we wanna do everything via the software here. So I'm going to select reverse from the software and that's right in the center screen there. So I'll go ahead and click reverse and then I'll make right input then we'll look down at our tail and you see that's moving to the right now. Alright so 
being that our software is calibrated and now our function is adjusted via the software you're going to know that the gyro direction it will be working in the correct fashion all right the next thing we want to do is our neutral position uh, if you look in the, the manual it shows you flush with a separation of about 10 degrees here uh, you can do it that way or if uh, you know you find it more comfortable for yourself you can get your two blades make sure that they're tracking with each other and you can calibrate that way uh, so you can adjust the neutral position I'm going ahead and moving it so you can see it and you'll see it move there when I adjust that so that's via software there just want to make sure you can see that and then you, you'll notice on the back of the tail I'll do that I'm not using the radio I'm just using the software I'm gonna go ahead and move that back and forth so you can see it so let me go ahead and get that where I'm comfortable with it All right, and once you're satisfied with the alignment, you can look on screen here. Position I have 17 for my setup. All right, now we've done the um, direction. Now we need to make sure we have full travel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a stick input here. Go up to the software. And I'm giving a right input right now. Go ahead and I'll unfold the tail blades. Let me show you that part here. Okay, so when I give a right input, okay, what you want to do is you want to get it to go as far as it can go without touching the bearing. Or you can take it that far and then back it up. Okay, until it bo bottoms out, but you don't want it to bind. So, pull that back. And on my right direction, that's about 89 via the software. So, I've made that adjustment right here. And it's about 89 there. So now we'll move over and we'll give our left input. And let's take a look at that. Go left, and again, there's a gap right here on the, the hub, or gap between the uh, yoke and the hub, so we'll go ahead and move that, and then we'll get that almost touching, not quite. All right, and so I've adjusted that, and that... That one's at uh, 140 on screen. Go ahead and pull that in. You see there. And now our tail's set up. So we have left, right. Okay, so once we've done that, We'll select next on our software screen here. Uh, we'll skip the uh, governor mode. This is for nitro. So we'll skip that. That's not needed right now. And now we're going to enter parameters menu. Yeah, we're going to use new parameters. All right, so we've done the initial setup. Now we're in the parameters menu. From here, basically, you want to just target which helicopter, in this case, 500 and up. That's what we're flying, the 550L, so that's what we have selected here. 
There is a beginner setting in the bottom right. It'll make the uh, helicopter very stable, very smooth, but the cyclics will be tamed down for someone who's just getting started. Whereas if you're a more advanced pilot, uh, you don't necessarily want to collect that. The stock settings are actually really good. You could start here and, and have a, a great amount of fun with your helicopter without doing anything. But if you want to make adjustments, there are a number of adjustments such as flight response, flight agility, swash gain uh, on the cyclic components. And then as far as on the tail, you can adjust your peel rate here. You can run, adjust your uh, gain. You can also adjust the uh, stopping power on the right and left sides independently. So you can really tailor it to your flying style. And that's what's great about having the ability to use the iOS as well as the Android applications uh, in the field via the Bluetooth. And you can make adjustments as needed for, for your flight performance. Uh, but uh, again, the stock settings are really good. You can go out and fly it. I use the stock settings. I'm not really going to, I'm not going to make any adjustments actually. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fly it and then feel what's going on with the helicopter and if I feel I need to make any adjustments to my tail or to cyclic for that matter I can do those at that time but for now that's it when you go in this parameter menu you just need to select large helicopter which we've done and everything else is stock the G Pro knows everything's good there and when you're done with that you just close on out you can power down your system and that's it. G Pro set up. Your helicopter should be ready for flight. Let me go ahead and pull my computer out of the screen here. And we'll look at our helicopter one more time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch off power to the G Pro. And then I'll switch it back on. So we're booting up and positive negative, give it a left input, right input, up, down, positive. All right, the last thing I need to do is I'll need to apply Loctite to all those screws, especially on my tail. You want to apply Loctite to those locations. And wanted to make sure that our servos were 90. And we'll tidy up some wiring. And we're ready for flight. Um, as far as in your manual, if you want to look at these steps, you can look at pages 23 to page, uh, what, say it's 31. In, or actually, excuse me, 33, and you'll see that you're set up. Let me go ahead and pull this off here. Uh, we've set it up. Get that off. And you're all set up. You're, you're, you're ready to go. We do have the neat battery tray feature for the helicopter. And let me just pull this back. Okay, well, we've just wrapped up doing the G Pro setup. As you can see, the first part of the G Pro setup. The calibration process of your radio to the G Pro is pretty straightforward. Uh, you, you need to set up your endpoints and make sure it's calibrated 100 100 in the software itself. And once you've done that, uh, you also check the reverse uh, via your stick inputs to make sure that the software sees left is left, right is right. Not looking at the helicopter, just the software. And uh, if you watched the video, you saw that. If you still need more uh, in depth, review of that. You can check out my other video of setting up the G Pro by Jeff Fastbinder. Just take a look at that. It's on YouTube. You can find that. And if you have any questions, you can email me at jeff at alignrcusa.com. be more than happy to answer your questions. Uh, again, as far as the wiring diagram, hopefully I give you a little insight to you know what needed to happen <clears throat> as far as our wires. And then if you look at look here, I'm going to go ahead and We'll go ahead and disconnect power. I think we're pretty clear on everything's working and functioning correctly. We'll put that aside. 
But I want to show you that, you know, we have the talon, it's designed to fit right here on the frame, right in the front here. Your wires from your motor, very short, so that's a good thing as far as for efficiency. But we have the wires going straight here to your radio tray, and the Talon 90 fits right in, fits in like a glove. And so that goes in there. And then also your battery with the tray, we've supplied uh, the straps. Uh, and Velcro, hook that to your battery, the hook and loop. Uh, again, I'm using the Align 60C packs here. This is a 5200 pack. Slides in on the tray. Just slide that in. Locks in. You're good to go. Good for flight. I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. And again, if uh, we can be of any assistance, please don't hesitate to email us at Align. Uh, you can check out our website at www.align.com.tw. My name is Jeff Fassbinder with Align. Thanks for watching.